Hey guys, it's summertime, so let's talk about some grilling. Hey guys, I'm Trace, thanks for watching D News, and this is our leisure and summertime correspondent, Will Johnson, and he went out into the field to learn a little bit about grilling, is that right? Yeah, I know on D News uh, we care about the science behind everything, right? So right. Uh, we, we looked at, uh, the idea was that we would fill people with knowledge about the science of grilling, not just throwing a patty on the grill, but knowing what's happening inside that burger patty. That's right, Will, cooking is actually a common form of chemistry. We're forcing our foods into a chemical change. Scientists think we've been cooking food since we finally harnessed fire like 400,000 years ago. Cooking food adds flavor, sure, but it also removes bacteria, makes food easier to digest, and helped us feed our larger and larger brain by providing more calories. We've even found Neanderthal teeth with cooked barley between them. They did not floss well. What's actually happening to the fibers and the meat itself? Well, it's breaking you know, down, right? I mean, it's, it's breaking down. Br brisket's a really good example. Uh, the brisket off a of cow, which is a classic meat cut that's used in barbecue, it's a working muscle, and and so as a result, those collagens, that connective tissue, it needs to be at a high temperature for a certain period of time before they they, they render to a state of tender. Uh, also, what happens in that process is a lot of that fat that's in that that muscle will render out, you know, make the product juicy, you know, get that flavor sweet because of that 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 fat kind of caramelizes and it gets good. The browning of meat is called the Maillard reaction. It's named for an early 20th century chemist named Louis Camille Maillard, and it may seem simple and tasty, but it's actually pretty complicated. Chemical changes are forever altering that piece of meat. The heating causes amino acids and proteins inside of it to break apart, and once apart, those acids will combine with the sugars inside there, and presto, things turn that nice brown color. So Myron, uh, when you throw a piece of meat on the grill, something is happening inside that meat. Uh, and, and a lot of people might not realize there's science behind it all. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, there is science behind it. it when you put meat onto a smoker and it's got heat to it, you start rendering. You start pushing out the fats, you start putting out the oils, and it's rendering out everything where it gets to a, a, a state of doneness and tenderness. In Myron's giant smoker, water is boiled in a pan underneath, which tenderizes the meat and renders the fat. Simultaneously, smoke is pulled in to bond with the leftover myoglobins from the cooking that adds flavor. Too much of that acidic smoke can mess up the meat by creating creosote, a tar-like substance that makes the meat bitter. The key to good barbecue is even, thin smoke, low heat, and balance. The outside temperature of the meat, which is inside your smoker here, they're looking for an equilibrium to the inside of the meat, and that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to balance. So hopefully you are now armed with information about the science behind grilling. The next time you're in the backyard with family and friends, go ahead and throw some of that knowledge out there. Please leave a comment about your favorite thing to grill or anything you'd like to share about the science of grilling. For D News, I'm leisure and summertime correspondent Will Johnson. And I'm Trace. Thanks for watching.